Chamber of uh, Utilities, and uh, Jeff Salter, who's the uh, President and CEO of Aztec Associates. Aztec Associates. Um, and we're uh, going to examine a very interesting topic in terms of uh, uh, customer engagement for residential around DSM. Certainly something that has been at the forefront of mind of uh, 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 people as they've been getting new smart meters and how to make use of them and what to do. So uh, these gentlemen here have some uh, very interesting information to, to give us and uh, show us the way a little bit in terms of what might be the future. Great. Over to you guys. Thank you. Just on the correction on that one, it's White House. I've been called a lot worse. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm not even correct. <laughs> Trust me, I've been called worse. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending this morning, the session. Um, I'm going to cough it up right now, okay? Usually I fly with no speaker notes, but uh, only help us out with, uh, with some speaker notes and, and uh, some information. So if I'm looking down more than this, because I usually like to be able to walk around and talk and have my arms flailing in the air, so I'm mm -hmm. sitting very stoic. Um, I am the, uh, the Director of Customer Corporate Services and the Director uh, um, and Conservation Officer for Peterborough Utilities. We are a small to mid-sized LDC up in uh, just north of the east here of, uh, of Toronto and we have about 35,000 customers. And we have been in demand side management and CDM for a long time, long time. Um, I'm just going to frame up the project is that we had a, a unique situation is we have, as I mean, we've been in, in, the, in the business for a long time, we had uh, approximately nine to 10,000 water heaters that had control systems that we've been controlling and we've been doing a DSM control for a long time, since the 60s. And that system, once the IP break came in, um, we were no longer built, allowed to be able to control those systems. Lo and behold, we never realized that we didn't remove them and uh, they've come back in as two weeks of a plus program. And so the yeah, system's already there, installed and, and deployed. So our challenge on this one is people, we have 9,000, we're deploying 9,000 of the Aztec in home displays uh, enabled by the energy access uh, system we are in Elster Shop uh, as part of the Peak Saver Plus initiative. Uh, with the deployment, uh, we powered more than almost a 30%, uh, 35% of our customer base to conserve electricity and save money. And all of this was done without a truck load. It was clearly identified by the Ontario Power Authority Residential Demand Response Working Group, which I was a member, along with some colleagues here in the room, um, that uh, when we were designed to be able to include an in-home display as part of the mixed for peak server plus, um, there was going to be challenges around having an in-home display that would have to be able to have uh, rates reset, that it would need to be able to have time reset manually, um, and that for those reasons that it may wind up in the kitchen drawer. For many LDCs, this is a limitation that has been the only solution for uh, due to meter uh, limitations. And deploying with 9,000 uh, IHDs at once, we had the opportunity to raise that bar. So we understood to ensure the program adaptation, we needed the customers had an IHD that was easy to use to understand and information that was useful and meaningful for them. And with the right technology and information, our customers would trust the program, which is necessary for customer engagement. And so we needed to ensure that the commissioning was simple and logistically possible for our customers and we deployed the greatest number of units over a shorter period of time. In doing so is when we initially sent out the letters to our customers back in 2011 saying that the devices would be there in the fall. And uh, during that time, this, we uh, had a product change in the middle of the, uh, of the device, which was well worth it because the system was, uh, the new ones we deployed were upgradable, they were uh, over the air upgradable, we could build upgrade firmware, and they had a lot more functionality. So well worth the wait. Um, limited budgets from the OPA, Folks in the room. Um, for IHD uh, deployment, we invested in a better product for our customers by reducing the deployment costs. It was unique, uniquely uh, challenging to develop a plan to roll out from a desktop uh, seriously to 9,000 points. In home displays with no truck rollouts, no meter changes, minimal changes to the AMI network. And this challenge netted the benchmark event, providing high volumes of AMI network connected, real time usage, accurate time of use, time of schedules and rate and time synchronization to provide the most accurate information to our customers. There's a lot of experience in the industry for deployment of the IHDs. There's not a lot of 
of uh, experience that are, are directly integrated to the AMI system. In fact, we believe is that we are probably the largest deployment of a uh, in-home displays that are actually hanging off the AMI network in Ontario and possibly in North America. It was unknown what effect the IHDs would have on the AMI system because they are actually nodes sitting out on that system that we have a very robust and our system has been working very, very well and uh, to receiving 99, 98% on a daily basis on our time to use schedules. So uh, we were very concerned being the cash register for our utility um, that anything we put on that system would make uh, jeopardize that great um, service level. Um, but knowing that risk is that we benefit from the deployment of 9,000 devices from the desktop, there's little question we choose Aztec. The Aztec would inspire and engage your customers with long-term stakeholders because of the intuitive design and ease of use and functionality and expandability. Our mission we have for the residential DSM program requires us to take risk and make bold choices. Uh, we've done that too, on, not just on the deployment of IHDs, but with other technology that we've deployed for demand-side management. Uh, just deploying one of the first two-way, full two-way systems within uh, Ontario that uh, uses broadband um, for our DSM for demand side management for thermostats and switches. It has driven our choice to future-proof the technology and it's season our relationship with our partners at Elster and Aztec. Um, it's meant that, that our choices reflect the triple bottom line investment in making in conservation and the investment we're taking, uh, asking our customers to make. <coughs> what expects to be bloodied, and we certainly have been bloodied at the forefront on some uh, of our initiatives, um, we deliver a painless experience to our customers. And in this case, the desktop deployment has resulted in a greater customer satisfaction and program adaptation. We are able to deploy without having to build a roll, roll a truck because Aztec is a leader in providing provision and prepared devices. This enables seamless uh, process where the ISD was mailed to the customer and arrived plug and play. And truly, that, that sounds like it's a uh, it's fairy tale, but it really is happening because when we're deploying these, we're deploying approximately 200 a day. And we've been sending them out, and customers going out, and we've been very few calls back on that. Because basically, if the customer comes, we prepare those devices and it comes back in. The customer plugs it in. It takes a few minutes to be able to register with the with the meter, and we've sent out that information to be able to turn on the broadcast messaging on those meters. And when we call, they they work uh, instantaneously. So along this, with the ability to provide the provisioning ISD in the field. Uh, gives the customer an immediate um, zoom the conservation efforts and they can move uh, within the distribution area. So we have moved to 8.0 on their Elster energy access system, which gives the ability for us to build actually a provision the devices in field. So when a customer moves from one place to the next, we can actually be able to provision that device onto their new meter. So we can all do that with our truck over from the desktop. And um, our customer uh, feedback has been very positive. We had a little quick I'm Jessica Haynes from Peterborough Utilities and I'm meeting today with Vanessa who's a customer and she has some experience with the Aztec in-home display so we're just going to ask her about that a little bit. So Vanessa, what are your first impressions of the Aztec in-home display so far? My first impressions are I like it a lot, like if it teaches me how to save money that's always good, money in my pocket over in someone else's and I think it will be very useful once I get more used to using the device and everything. So are you finding the device easy to use so far? So far it's very simple to use and like technology and me don't really get along and I could install it fine. It took 10 minutes to install and you can just press this button on the screen and it goes through it. So it's pretty easy to use. Like I think anyone really could use it. Um, would you say that the Aztec device is making you more aware of energy conservation? I think it is because it tells you like, oh, high peak time or off peak time. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to wait like the extra hour so it's off peak. So then I don't pay as much as what I could be paying. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> That was our assumption we had that it was actually so bad. I mean, we were actually reached out to our customer base through a social media to be able to ask them, you know, looking for volunteers. And it has some, had lots of volunteers that people would like to be able to speak uh, to the benefits of. Um, even if the customer doesn't decide to make cost, use of the cost and usage information, and we know in fact that they are doing it, so we can't even story yesterday um, to, to, to Jeff. 
about uh, a customer who had a plant outage and they went out to the website to be able to look at their consumption during that outage. Uh, they looked at the web presentation and noticed, just because of the way the Ontario uh, and the MDMR um, fills in those blanks when there's no consumption, they're saying that should show you consumption during that time period. And they went, I got the phone call and say, what do you mean it was consumption during this time period? I said, well, really, that's the way they fill in the blanks, you know, it's, that's how they, they fill it out. They don't show you with any zeros. You can't have a zero. So he didn't like that. I said, however, go to your in-home display. And I said, if you check on those hours, you'll see that there's no consumption there. And he went back, and I could hear him walking away. <laughs> and then he walked back to the point and he goes, you're right, there is no consumption. I said, that's because that's coming directly from your meter. I said, when it goes to the MDMR, a bunch of things happen with that. And, and, uh, and that. So it was, it was a great way for the custom build to, to prove correctly that uh, uh, there is a zero consumption and it was actually was off and we're not building them for that. Well, we are actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. So we know that the customers are using the information on the screen and will continue to respond to the light art, even if, with, without them actually yeah, access, right. accessing the information. Though the information is very rich on the in home display and they have, you know, it keeps historical information and they have. Uh, you don't know what they're using the last 24 hours, shows them all day off, mid and uh, peak times, that they can be able to go back and see what they've been using over the time period and, and they can reset that and they can reset it on a monthly basis. Um, we noticed that, that that honeymoon period will, they only will subside a little bit and the customer's just going back to the arc and looking at the light arc to be able to see the color changes and the faster moving and if it's moving fast when it's red, then the customers will be able to take that reaction and be able to react to that device. So, um, the, it has been a very successful project. Uh, we're just uh, on the, the end of wrapping it up and getting those uh, devices deployed. And uh, so far, so good. Everything has worked. We have no degradation in our AMI network uh, whatsoever. We still are enjoying our high level of service from our, from our system. So, I'm going to leave this off to Jeff a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to pass to Jeff. Uh, Jeff and I have known each other for a long time. And the very first time I saw the Gen 1 um, Aztec display with the light wheel going, I said, that is the coolest thing. I even had one on my desk, and it was just on demo mode for years. And I said, at some point in time, I said, I'm going to have these deployed within our distribution. <coughs> and uh, it was just fortuitous that, that we, the circumstances were right, and we brought in uh, the water here to be able to get these. Um, these customers lost sign up on the Peak Saver program and uh, through the, the, the vision of the OPA and the working group um, to be able to come up with a, uh, a plan of, of how we can display this part of the mix. So, Jeff? It's uh, kind of exciting for us too, having uh, gone through a deployment of our um, plastic products over the course of three years in, in drips and drabs. You know, we began the R&D on that back in 2006, but the uh, second generation product that uh, we launched at Peterborough, instead of 9,000 all at once, uh, was a really exciting uh, deployment launch. And it's pretty challenging to be developing the DSM technology, um, ever-changing conservation policy, but our mission has stayed constant, and that we wanted to be able to deliver increasing granularity, correct information to engage, educate, and of course motivate the customers. Our tolerance, like David's, is uh, pretty high for the bleeding edge, we're not afraid to be first out of the gate and can stand all that inherent pressure being out of the pack. We both understand the greater impact of a dedicated home device over computers or phone-based interfaces. Uh, you know, an app on a smartphone can be more effective than a web interface, but it doesn't engage everybody the way the light art does, changing speed and color. And though the web interface is a good way to show historical usage, David highlighted some of the problems with the way those data are manipulated, but it doesn't give that uh, important at a glance feedback that's a key component for energy conservation. Now, unless the family computer is located where everyone in the family can see it, and the customer's logged in, the kind of information they get on their uh, energy usage, uh, it's going to be that. With the patented light arc, the uh, home display alerts homeowners as the TOU changes, the consumption increases, and it presents that information in an actionable and timely way. You just want to speak to this, Jeff, and <coughs> understand why. Yeah. Sorry, David. So basically, basically what we're looking at here is in uh, David's home, and you can see the time changing there, and it's going to be going from the mid-peak into the off-peak period, and so uh, you've got uh, the color going from yellow indicating mid-peak, 
and then as it switches through to uh, the off-peak period, um, the color moves green. So basically what it means is from across the room, without having to look at some cardboard cutout or check the clock, you can see what's going on. And we do find these tend to be in kitchens or dens or high traffic. And of course, the, as we were hearing us talk about the color arc before, and now you can see it. So you both had that speed of rotation, which is proportional to how much you're using and the color type and tariff. And in this case, going from the mid peak. And here we are, it's about 6.59, and the time is going to change, 7 o'clock, and the next loop around should be green. And there we go, back to off peak. How big is it? Um, it is about uh, uh, three inches by three and a half inches, and we have our, uh, and just right outside the door is where Melody's really going to go, we sort of have our uh, display booth on top of the product there. Anyway, um, by going with a product like this, you know, you're making a long-term investment in conservation, and the capabilities of the Aztec combined with the LCRMI is can push the conservation efforts. David realized the need to design a functionality that supports the customer success, and its expandability is the driver of long-term retention. So when you invest in the device, you're investing in your customer engagement. This one's uh, just running a simulation, but it's easy enough to sort of pass it around and take a look. <coughs> anyway, once you've got the customers with some success on DSM, you want to have further engagement, and that's where the two-way communication for long-term incremental gains is important. And this is why expandability between the IHD and the AMI is so important. The ASTIC is a two-way device compared to the Elster's new AMS 8 and up. Um, be able to have conservation information messaging that's needed to drive ongoing conservation efforts. And the ability to put out new programs and pricing models when they come up is an actionable way to have a direct link to the customer, and it's in a way that a paper bill insert that gets ignored does not do that. As David said, being on the leading edge doesn't really be, does involve being bloody, but it takes that entrepreneurial vision and determination to envision everything beyond targets for 2014 and develop technology that will give a high rate of customer adoption and retention. And because of the capabilities, the Aztec has a higher price point than some non-connected solutions, which has been seen as a market barrier by some utilities. We have to emphasize that the low initial cost doesn't mean anything if the device both costs more to install and support, and also ends up in the kitchen drawer, in which case it does not deliver any further goal. <coughs> so the real cost of the technology is not just a lower upfront price, but the impact on long-term success of DSM programs. We're now seeing communication companies, both cellular companies and cable companies, trying to move further into the consumer home with security and energy offerings. And a lot of what they're doing is basing that on a two-way communications into the home. And that's where Aztec can provide that same kind of interaction, but on the utility's own private network. So we need our customers to trust that we'll continue to enable their conservation success. And part of that is making sure that you go from a monologue to a dialogue. If the utility and EMI do not provide the two-way communications, you're going to lose the attention of the customers and they'll cease to be engaged. So you have the background behavior of the IHD that's able to get the consumer's eyes with a push light arc and it can be sound as well. Notifications really get noticed. Eventually, in a multi-prong approach, targets can be sent to the IHD over the PA network and even tied into web-based programs. So for this uh, program, there are challenges and risks and uh, putting out uh, prepared devices, the engineering time to make it possible to have each IHD unique, and the processes to ensure accurate labeling of the uniquely programmed devices. It's a risk if the utility and the partners haven't done their preparation. In the case of Peterborough, the risk was mitigated by all the pre-provisioning work that they did. <coughs> they confirmed the meters and record were associated with the correct address and account. This resulted in a lot of happy customers and the plug and play results that we saw. And this creates that solid basis for the ongoing customer relationship. So, with the challenges of working within a landscape of changing policy, meeting deeper targets over time, both Aztec and Peterborough were engaging our customers simply, intuitively, and directly to meet that goal. We're enabling with these successful partners today and giving them the technology and information and support they need to be successful. So, questions? Questions, students. <laughs>